So the first question, probability of Z less than 1.14. Take a minute guys and do this one and then we'll do it. Okay, so lower bound is negative a million, upper bound is 1.14, mean is zero, standard deviation is one. So let's do that. Oops. Quit. Second and distribute. Normal CDF. Negative a million. Upper is 1.14. Zero and one. Based. And that's what you get. So it's 0 0.8729. He said four decimal places. Next question. Probability of Z less than 0 0.34 or Z greater than 1.24. I gave you a hint and or means a plus. So guys, you gotta do this one separately. Then you're gonna do this one separately and add up the two answers. So it would be 8.873 if this was three decimal places, but because it's four decimal places, it would be 8729 students asking about this. Okay, guys, let's do. So this is two question and one. The or is a plus, means a plus. So let's find probability of Z less than 0 0.34 or Z greater than 1.24. So for less than 0 0.34, negative a million lower bound, upper bound 0 0.3401. For greater than 1.24, guys, you begin with 1.24 as your lower bound, then you put a million and then zero and then one. Let's see what the answers are. Clear and second distribute. You're gonna be tired of using this formula. You're gonna use it a lot. So please get used to it. So I got 0 0.6331 plus. Let's see the next one. So it's gonna be no more than uh, what we have there. Second distribute, uh, 1.14, then a million or a trillion, just put as many zeros as you want. I got 0 0.1271. And let's add them up. 0 0.6331 plus 0 0.1271. Enter. And I got 0 0.7602. That's the answer. Next question, guys. Area to the oh, left. Sorry, can I ask a question? How did you get 0 0.1271? Um, okay. Because I got 0 0.1075. Let me see. Maybe I made a mistake. Let me see. One point. Or is it? Oh, I put 1.14. It's 1.24. You're correct. You see what I did? I did 1.14. It's 24. Let's change it. 0 0.1075, you're correct. There we go, let's fix it. That's a 2.4, and then we need to get the correct answer now. 0 0.1075 plus 0 0.6331, final answer 7.406. Three. What's the area to the left of Z equal 1.019? Uh, to the left, guys, means less than. To the right means greater than. In between means in between. So we need the area to the left of Z equal 1.09. You see, I left the blanks for you. So you need to put the variable Z here. And what sign would you use, guys, if it is to the left? Less than or greater than? Less than? Less than, definitely. 1.09. Okay, I'll give you a minute to uh, find the answer. 
please everybody work with me on what z score is in the 74th percentile let me explain what that means probably this is the first time you hear about this so 74th percentile means 74 percent that means the area is 74 percent so let's sketch the curve and show you how to do this area that's a zero that's a z If I tell you guys on the test that you scored in the 80th percentile, it means that you did better than 80% of the students. That means 80% of the students are below you. If I tell you you did in the 95th percentile, it means that 95% of the students were below you in, as far as scores. So that's what a percentile means. Here, a 74th percentile means 74% of the area is below you, not just this number. And he wants you not just this number Z. So if I shade it, guys, I have to shade more than 50% because that's a 74%. So I have to shade toward the right, right here. And he wants this Z score, guys. And this area, as I told you, this is 76%. And how do you change this to a decimal? What 76% as a decimal? It will be what? You cannot put 76% on the calculator. You have to change it. Yeah. OK. So what, what formula we're going to use to find Z? We're not finding probability. We have a probability, which is 74 per 76%. Or 74, sorry. 74%. All right. So you guys agree with me? It's going to be when it comes to Z, it's the inverse norm. And can you tell me what the three arguments? We need three arguments only. Area to the left, 0 and 1. So what is the area to the left here? 0.74? Yeah, it's obvious. He says, uh, but it's a per so anytime it is a percentile, guys, you just use it as is 0 0.74. 0 and 1. Let's put it to practice. Turn the calculator on. Second, distribute inverse norm 0 0.74, 0, 1. Watch, guys. X is Z is 0 0.64. All right. Next question. Number five. Please pay attention to those because we're going to do an activity right after this. A mile runner's times for the mile are normally distributed with the mean of 244 and a standard deviation of five seconds. Once he gives you a mean and a standard deviation different from zero one, guys, you're talking about X, no more Z. So mean is 244 sec uh, seconds and the standard deviation is five. What is the probability that on a given run, the time will be 240 seconds or less? Okay. Can you guys help me interpret this? So what do I write here? We need a probability of X. It says 240 seconds or less. How would you express this? Less than or equal to? Yep. Even if you don't put an equal to, it's fine. Okay, 240 equals normal CDF. Okay, help me out, guys. I need a lower bound here. What would be the lower bound? It's a less than. Remember, what do we agree on when it is a less than for the lower bound? Negative a million. Yep. You can memorize this. That's fine, guys. It's going to work always. Then I said your upper bound will be this number right here because I cannot exceed 240. Then your mean, guys, is whatever he says the mean is 244. And your standard deviation, whatever he says the standard deviation is, 5. 
put it on your calculator, guys, and give me the answer. Everybody, please try because you're going to be asked to try in a little bit. So round to four decimal places. So I'm going to go slow to give you the chance to do it. So it's second, distribute, normal CDF, negative a million. Put as many zeros as you want. It doesn't matter. Upper is 240, guys. Mean is to, oh, I made a mistake with the mean is 244. No, that's fine. 244 and then five. And you're gonna get the probability. 0 0.21. One nine. That should be the answer. Yep. I got an answer in the chat, which is correct. Resume. Number six, on a standardized test, the scores are normally distributed with a mean of 400 and a standard deviation of 80. As you read the question, guys, label them. This is the mean and this is the standard deviation. What score must one have to be in the 80th percentile? 80th percentile, guys, is a percent. It's 80%. It's a probability. That means think right away. He's giving you the probability he wants X. But let me sketch it so you see how we're going to find the X. So look. Just do the normal curve. 80th percentile means... 80% of the students, you score better than 80% of the students. So this is the mean right here. And 80th percentile will be this area. More than 50%, watch. That's 80%. I need the X value right here. What would be the score for which 80% of the students scored below that one? So that's an inverse norm. Okay, guys, can you give me the three arguments? That should be very easy because it's an area to the left. What would be the area? Point 0.80. Point 0.80, yeah. Don't be afraid of saying that. That's the area to the left, point 0.80. And then mean and standard deviation. Definitely the answer has to be above the mean because you're in the eighth percent. If it was 30th percentile, it will be below the mean. But anything 50% or more, guys, will be above the mean. Okay, let's check. Uh, second, distribute, normal CDF. Not normal CDF, sorry, wrong function, quit. Second distribute inverse norm. See, three arguments. Point 80, mean is 400. It's going to give you the X value. That's all we want, X. 467.32. Since this is uh, probably an SAT uh, score, so you want to do it as a whole uh, number, so it will be 467. Okay, so 80% of the students score below 467. That's what it means. Okay. Let's look at number seven. Let me pause here. So it's an X value. Guys, remember when the mean is not zero, standard deviation is not one, it's not Z, it's X, always X. The raw, the actual value. Normal CDF, okay, what's the lower bound, guys? Thirteen point four. very good. When it is a greater than, we just begin with this. And then we put what? A million. 
upper bound. I'll write it down here. Then your mean, don't change the mean, guys. It's 10 and 3. Okay, run the calculator. Now it's just a matter of uh, running the calculator to find the probability. And let's see what's the likelihood to have something like that happen. Normal CDF, guys, lower is 13.4. And then upper is a million. I don't even look at the zeros. I put as many zeros as I want. Put enough, always put enough. Here you go. One, two, eight, five. And that's the answer. Sometimes, guys, he'll ask you to round your answer, uh, to change your answer to a percent. If he says what percent instead of a uh, of proportion, so you can write it as a percent. Just move the decimal place two digits to the right and place the percent sign. The left. Yep, definitely. And you, you can get it on the left. There you go. This area is 25%. And I want this Z. And you guys agree with me, the answer is going to be negative because it's below zero. So let's see if technology is going to give me zero uh, negative. Definitely it will. Z is inverse norm. You put the 0 0.25, guys. You put the 0 and you put the 1. And that's it. You can find Z. There you go. Uh, second, distribute. Inverse norm, 0 0.25. 0, 1, paste. It's negative 0 0.67, guys. It's a z-score, usually two decimal places. Negative 0 0.67. I want to show you, you could have find this answer using table if you like. My area is 0 0.25, guys, watch. Go inside the table and find something close to 0 0.25. I think I'm right here, guys. Right here. Which one is closer to 0 0.25? The 0 0.2483 guys or the 0 0.2514? Which one? Which one do you think? I mean, either answer are okay, but look, the 0 0.2514 is closer than uh, to 2.25 than this one. Here there's a difference of 14, here's a difference of 17. So this one will be a better answer. But you're gonna see, let me see what the answer is. So negative 0 0.6, and let's see what this number here, seven. What did we get? Negative 0 0.67. You see the table? The table, guys, is done using the inverse norm feature. So don't be surprised if the answers match. They should match because uh, this table was derived, you know, just using the built-in formula on the calculator. Okay, resume. So we're going to do 10 now. A firm's marketing manager believed that the total sales for next year will follow the normal distribution with mean of 2.5 million and a standard deviation of 300,000. This is the standard deviation. How do you write 2.5 million, guys, as a number here? when you want to enter it so it will be what two and then what five how many zeros six. If, you do, if you do six zeros it will be 25 uh, millions so you want to reduce your number of zeros to what to five there you go this is how you can read it guys two million 500,000. That's important because you miss with one zero, it's 
it's just going to screw up the whole thing. Okay. What's the probability that the firm's sales will fall within 150,000 of the mean? Fall within. This is why I'm doing this problem, just so you guys understand what fall within means here. Uh, if I tell you guys you have an appointment with me at 2 p.m., but you can come within 10 minutes of the appointment, what does that mean? In between? Meaning, in other words, what does it mean? That you're allowed to come 10 minutes early or up to what? Before. 10 minutes, or 10 minutes late. So what does it mean to find the probability that the sales fall within 150,000 of the mean? They could be up to 150,000 less or up to 150,000 watt more. So look what you do guys for those two values. You take the 2,500,000 and subtract 150,000 and you take the 2,500,000 and you add 150,000. So if you add, it would be here 200, 2,650,000, and here would be 2,350,000. I could have made it easier on you and just said, find the probability that the sales are between two those two numbers. You just put them in there. And guys, using the calculator when you have the lower bound and the upper bound is very easy. You don't need to think of a hundred, uh, a million plus a million, negative a million. No, you have a lower bound and you have the upper bound. You just put them uh, in there. So let's do that. So that's going to be, you guys, normal CDF. And uh, you might not have a room here, so I'm just going to squeeze him in. 2,350,000. Then 2,650,000. Then the mean, which is 2,500,000. And then the standard deviation, which is 300,000. Okay, let's do it on the calculator. Clear, second, just normal CDF. So we have 2,350,000, just be careful, don't mess up with the number of zeros, 2,650,000, mean is 2,500,000, and standard deviation is 300,000. There you go. Okay, it's 0 0.3829. I thought the upper was two two million five hundred thousand. Yeah, the mean. Oh, okay. The mean was two million. That's the third argument. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Three eight two nine. Okay. Last question, guys. I promise we'll take a well deserved break after this. What would be the sales level that we put you in the top 90%, 90% of sales? So you're a salesperson. You will get you will get a reward, you will get a raise if you are in the top 90%. How much sales should you make in order to be considered a top 9%? And I think guys, you hear this a lot a top 5% real estate agent, a top 10% real estate, how do they determine that? They know the mean, they know the standard deviation, they can use them, you know, to determine how much sales you should do in order to be considered as a top sales person. We need a top 90%. A top 90%, guys, would it be on the right or on the left of the mean? Right. Right, definitely, it has to be on the high side. Remember guys, on the number line, as we walk to the right, the numbers increase. So let me do a sketch guys for you. And this is my 9% It's gonna be here. This is the area, I need the X value guys. And this area is 9%. 
0 0.09. Okay, so to do the answer, we need the X equals inverse norm. Okay, guys, give me the three arguments and then let's wrap this up. What would be the, remember your calculator requires the area to the left. Since this is a top 90%, it's an area to the right. What would be the area to the left? Negative. Not negative. 0.91. One minus 0 0.09, which is 0.91. Agree? No negative area. You cannot have a negative area here. It's probability can never be negative. So 0 0.91. And then put the 2,500,000. Uh, and then put the standard deviation, which is 300,000. And watch, guys. Here's the answer. Inverse norm. Get it ready. Look, guys, I'm going to make a mistake and put 0 0.09 here. Just a mistake. And watch. See what happens then the answer is not gonna make sense to you. Watch, it's okay, make the mistake, but learn from the mistake. Okay, I got 2,097,000. How could I be a top sales person and I'm doing below average? Remember guys, the average is the key. If you, if you, you are below the average, you cannot be considered a top number can't be it has to be above the average so you must have done something wrong nothing wrong with the mean nothing wrong with the standard deviation so it must be wrong here well you know your teacher says always do a one minus here so i'm gonna change it you're gonna see the numbers changing now watch $2,902,227. If I round to the nearest dollar, guys. $2,902,227. That makes sense. It's above the average, so it should make sense uh, to you.